Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about the representation of the famous Scandian snow cover phenology in climate reanalyses and CLM5 during the MODIS era. This is a study that we are conducting at the University of Oslo with my colleagues at the Department of Geosciences. The, and also uh, there are two projects supporting this study. Uh, the first one is Lattice. Lattice brings many different approaches to analyze investigate the land atmosphere interactions in cold environments uh, with a similar approach uh, Emer the emerald project uh, is focusing on more arctic vegetation in representation in the earth system models and the common interest in this both project is the land surface model called community land model clm it, this, in this study, also, we are using climate reanalyses and the satellite remote sensing product, particularly for MODIS. The, and our first question is, how does CLM5 perform compared to observational data set? And I will focus on more snow dynamics aspect. As uh, I mentioned, the community land surface model is important for us because it's the land component of the two Earth system models, CESM2 and NORESM. And uh, as climate reanalysis data sets, we are using four different uh, data sets at different spatial and temporal resolution. Here I show the mean annual maximum snow water equivalent values from all of them. And you see over the Norwegian mountains and Svalbard, the uh, all gives different uh, values. So when we compare with CLM5 for each season, all the uh, all analyses gave us different responses over mountainous area, and they there are these large gaps also when we look at the time series over Fennoscandia, which is the mainland, and also Svalbard archipelago, which is uh, the difference is more about the glacier representation, but it is another issue. But here we understood we need a representative baseline snow cover map based on remote sensing. This is why we started this effort, because we are in satellite era. Uh, there are uh, t uh, two satellites that MODIS uh, sensor is, uh, is on board, and the uh, available global MODIS snow cover products are uh, actually are quite diverse and in this study we are using high resolution uh, temporal resolution and spatial resolution data both from Aqua and Terra and to create this snow cover map we are using four tiles that were uh, this uh, Fennoscandian area and to create the daily maps we are stitching these four images and put them on top of it and of course we are merging both aqua and terra and aqua images to reduce the cloud cover gaps and in, eventually we are having this kind of daily images for it uh, over the region and here are also another step of processing is calculating snow metrics. MODIS is default, uh, provides us a normalized different snow index. This is calculated based on this reflectances at the visible and short wave infrared ranges. And from here we are calculated fractional snow cover area based on this equation and we have uh, some cloud gap filling algorithms and from here for each water year we are calculating six different snow cover metrics namely snow cover duration and for us another important one is the first and the last snow day. When we look at this six snow metrics for each year it looks like this are maps for it is each of the day, day of the year and our aim, as I said, is to evaluate CLM5 model. And this is what we are focusing is the out of the box version, which is the default CLM5 runs. So when we calculate the same way, uh, there's no cloud gap on in CLM, so there's not this metric. And when we put them next to each other for each year, we saw that actually this uh, there is a agreement actually with the patterns for each water year. However, over the mountainous area, CLM five compared to MODIS, it looks like underestimating the snow cover duration. Therefore, we needed to evaluate also the model MODIS retrievals. And for this, we have a validation study ongoing over FINSA in Norway. 
and it includes actually different atmospheric forcing sensitivities from era 5 land for this we are preparing currently the representative forcing data over finity and uh, the next uh, also step we are using higher resolution satellite images from Sentinel-2 and Landsat-8. In this uh, blue and red areas, you see the false color images. And on the black and white and gray scale, you see the fractional snow cover area based on Sentinel-2 and Landsat-8. So this is an ongoing study. As I said, we are trying to combine all the information together by also using aircraft and terrestrial photos from this region. And this is going to hopefully end soon. Thank you for listening.